a countdown. All right, there we are. All right, Chris, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, we're going to have a great conversation talking about how you're making money online, what you do, and kind of use that as motivation for you know other people looking to get started freelancing or making money online. So as a starting point, why don't you tell us you know who you are, where you're from, and what do you do to make money? Yes. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, well, thanks for having me on the Mike Nardi channel. Uh, it's a pleasure. Um, basically, myself. So I started, I started freelancing back in 2020, mm -hmm. or technically, we can probably get into this a little bit later, but technically it was around about 2019, um, but properly started in 2020, and it's purely been on Fiverr. Okay. Uh, before I had no idea what Fiverr was, it was actually a friend who started doing a similar thing to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And um, she was telling me like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm making this much money here. This client paid me this much. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like to basically just make videos for clients, it's insane. Uh, so I, I got into it um, and I started literally with exactly what I had. I didn't invest much money. I think I probably invested maybe one to two hundred dollars at the very start but mm -hmm. i just used for example the camera that i had at the time and things like that and yeah it's kind of over the past the first year was good but then it just kind of got better and better in regards to the return on investment and income mm -hmm. and now fiverr has basically turned out to be my full-time job nice. um it's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. Uh, however, it can be sometimes overwhelming sure. because the like the fact is for me at the moment, I pretty much I would say there's probably two or three days in the month where I don't get orders. Really? Um, more or less, I get orders every single day and not wow. just one, maybe two or three. Wow. Um, I think last last Saturday. And this is what I love about it, because on the weekend when now I kind of try to take the weekends off. On a Saturday, I made like $970 just in orders. And nice. it's like on a Saturday, whereas if I was working a normal job, uh, I wouldn't be getting paid anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So, what do you sell on Fiverr? So it's video spokesperson. Uh, okay. So basically clients will contact me um, and they will want a video done for their kind of brand or business or product. Um, normally they have a script. However, recently... I've noticed over the last few months, I've gone a lot more into the whole copywriting and script writing, mm -hmm. probably not on your level, but on a kind of, um, yeah, creating the scripts for clients. It's, kind of like helping them manage more of the whole process. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. I'll have some clients come to me and they'll be like, okay, I want to make a video and explain a video about my website. Um, but explain the videos, the client doesn't always have a script. So... Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're quite difficult to create the script unless you're going through it at that specific moment in time. So, um, yeah, I'll create the script for them. Of course, I'll charge extra for that. But script writing for me, like, I have to be in the mood for it. In it's, the zone. Yeah, sometimes, honestly, some of sometimes it's just overwhelming by the amount of them that I have to do. Um, and I'm just like, oh, I just can't be bothered. I really can't be bothered to script write. You know, it's... Uh, it's just, it's hard work just sitting yeah. there and just yeah. writing. Yeah. And it's tough if it's about a business that you're not like particularly into or, or know much yeah. about. Yeah, it's tough. Or I find the most difficult thing is when you, when you get clients who have already kind of written a preliminary script, mm -hmm. but they're not native English and their English is quite bad. So then you have to go over it and rewrite it and understand what they're trying to say. Yeah. That's that tough. for me is like... Let's let's just start again, shall we? Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome though. How, how did you choose video spokesperson? Like, what 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 did you do before? Was it related? Uh, not at all, not at all. Uh, so basically, <laughs> I moved to Poland. I'm from the UK, but I moved to Poland what seven years ago now. Um, really? What what, yeah. what sparked that? Oh man, women. What can I say? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lid, yeah, uh, there was a woman. Turned out to be a little bit crazy after a year. Um, <laughs> but honestly, I stayed because I don't know if you've ever been to Poland or heard about it. Generally, it's a fantastic place. Cost really? of living, etc. is really nice. Um, yeah. And to be completely honest, before moving to Poland, 
I had, I probably had no idea where Poland was, you know, <laughs> or if I ever thought about it, I probably thought of something like, I, I yeah, I didn't think of anything like a. So you're not Polish. You just moved to a totally foreign European country. Wow. Pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Um, but honestly, now I stay here. Like like I say, cost of living is fantastic, um, and even. Yes, you get proper seasons as well compared to the UK. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not bad. It's actually quite a nice place. It's not too bad. I am kind of looking to get out of here sometime soon. But generally, yeah, I wouldn't see myself going back to the UK. Um, sure. But yeah, so come to Poland. And then I was I started doing English teaching. Oh, okay. Uh, because at that time, it was pretty much the only option I had not knowing Polish language. It's sure. changed a lot now. There are tons of companies here who are employing like multinational people. Mm-hmm. Um, but at that time, it was I just focused on teaching English. And I also was teaching English like in a university and things like that. And which, again, was beyond me because I had no skills or experience in this whatsoever. <laughs> but you come here and they're like, OK, you're a native speaker. Yeah. I was like, yeah. OK, yeah. So you can start teaching in a university. <laughs> All the other teachers have like a minimum of like a bachelor's or master's degree. I wow. didn't go to university. And uh, and they're like, yeah, you're a native speaker. It's all good. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of responsibility sitting in a university classroom teaching. <laughs> it's not even that. The biggest problem was well, these were not young kids because it was a private university. These guys were like in their 30s or 40s who were managers of companies. And they were oh, studying wow. like a management course or a logistics course. But they would have English as an add-on inside of their course. And um, oh. yes, yeah, so you have these people who are, I don't know, almost double your age, just sitting there <laughs> listening to you. And it's, yes, yeah, a bit. And how did that lead to video spokesperson? So, <laughs> so pretty much COVID hit, uh, COVID started to hit. And then one of my friends already kind of knew about Fiverr. I had no idea about Fiverr before. Um, she knew about it and she was looking at it. And then she found the video spokesperson niche. Okay. And she was she tried it out. Uh, she already had a camera. She made like a like a homemade teleprompter and things like that. Um, and yeah, and then like a few weeks later, she's like telling me, "Oh yeah, I got an order for like four hundred dollars from this client, and uh, or I'm making money from here." And before you know it, she's making like fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. Wow. And I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" It's like. <laughs> She's now making the same as what she was making in her full-time job before she got laid off due to COVID. Wow. Um, so, and I was like, okay, I, I've got to look into this. And uh, yeah, checked it out. And I had a camera. It was it was a pretty rubbish one. Nothing, I think it was probably like a, maybe a $400 camera, nothing fancy. Um, and yeah, got a microphone, just one of those like lav microphones to plug into the camera, which are super cheap as well. Yeah. Got some cheap lighting off of Amazon for like, yeah. I think it was about like, maybe I would say $80. Okay. Um, and that was it. That was literally it. I got myself a green screen, learned how to kind of, green screens are a pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> to try to light them correctly and evenly and things like that, they are horrendous. Um, Is that a green screen behind you? Not here, uh, up here it is. Uh, okay. So you've got like, the green roller and the white. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a pain. But generally green screens were like a massive thing. I would say a couple of years ago, everybody, a lot of my clients were like, yeah, we want a green screen video for this, this. Right. And then, you know, when, when somebody is paying you, for example, $200 for a job that takes you 30, 40 minutes, yeah. it's like, wow, there's, there's something yeah. here. Like this is, this is mental. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Um, that's remarkable. So you you were an English teacher. Your friend started making some real cash on Fiverr and you're like, this is nuts. I got to try it. You bought like some budget stuff on Amazon and you're, you're there. You're flying through Fiverr. Um, yeah. What, <laughs> what caused you? So like my, my question is like, I know you were doing the English teaching, but mm-hmm. did you have like a path you were expecting to go down in a career and now Fiverr has totally derailed that or, or where, where were you with that? To be honest, none at all. Uh, okay. I've done so many different jobs. Um, I spent a year in Australia and oh, nice. traveled around. I've done, honestly, I've done loads of jobs. Um, a lot of my jobs were kind of in sales before. 
just mm-hmm. because then you can earn commissions and all always the earnings are better. But generally, no, like nowadays, when people talk about careers, I just I I don't believe there's anything. I I just yeah, careers is not a thing that I believe is around nowadays. Like okay. you know, back in the day, people were like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna study to become, I don't know, a doctor or a pilot or something like that, or you know, and it was like a proper career. Yeah. Nowadays, like people just float between different jobs so easily. Like, yeah. for example, I could right now massive a massive kind of industry which is big here in Poland is project management. Okay. And it pays really well. And so I could actually, with pretty much no experience whatsoever, I could probably go get a job as a project manager in an IT company, have no clue about IT whatsoever. But the fact that I can manage people and make sure the project runs on time, that's all you need. Really? And wow. Yeah, it's, I, I don't know. For me, careers are not such... Um, it, it worries me a little bit, I would say, like in regards to when I get older. Mm-hmm. Uh I'm just hoping that I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 50 and then everything will be good. Yeah, no, no <laughs> worries. That's awesome. Um, yeah, that's really remarkable. I feel like that that's so true. Like I, I was in sales for my whole career. And, you know, nowadays I just feel like nobody is as attached to a career as they were back in the day, right? Because there's no like, people don't care about the prestige anymore. They don't care about being a lifer somewhere. And, you know, without talking negatively about any company in particular, companies just don't treat people as good as I think they used to. Like a lot of people aren't able, like at least where I'm at in Canada, can't afford to buy houses, you know, salaries aren't enough, cost of living is so high. I'm sure it's like that in the UK as well. Yeah. But, um, you know, nowadays you're signing up for all of your time at a career. It's barely enough it's not as fulfilling as it might, might have been in the past. So yeah, people are just floating around trying to find that thing. And I feel like I'm in the same boat. Like, am I going to have a pension when I'm 70? No, but I hope exactly. to God I have a huge chunk of cash in the bank by then <laughs> that I don't have to worry about it. That's really yeah. cool, man. And honestly, that's, that's the thing, like you were saying, this whole commitment with work. Uh, here in Poland, I noticed when I was doing the English teaching, because again, I was teaching adults as well, going to their homes, I would turn up at their home maybe like 6 p.m. So they finish work about 4 p.m. And they would still be working. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Like, you yeah. finished work earlier, no? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, but I've got to get this done. Okay, so are you getting paid for this? Well, no, no because, you know, I just have to get it done. It's like, but your contract will probably say 40 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, man. Also, I've never been so that was something where, you know, being in I was in tech sales, they had this like culture where they expected you to do stuff like that. But I felt the same way. I'm like, we negotiated this contract. Mm -hmm. Why am I now going above and beyond without getting compensated? And like, if you do go above and beyond, the compensation will never match the extra work you've put in. So, yeah, it's 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 mixed up. I feel like there's a huge shift happening in the world and. So why we're talking, I, I think freelancing is a huge yeah. part of it. I think now I, I'm one thing I'm not. And this annoys me a little bit when I see my friends who are a similar age. Uh, for example, even my partner's sister, she's worked, she's what, 35, 36 years old. She's worked in a bank for mm-hmm. the last 12, 15 years, something like that. Something crazy. Maybe not 15, like 10, 10 12 years. In okay. the same bank, in a similar position. And I'm like, you're 35 years old. What are you doing? Like, yeah. broaden your horizons. Get out there a little bit more. You've been probably earning pretty much the same salary for the last 10 years. And I know. nowadays, like, there are so many people, and this is what annoys me, and this is kind of what I want to show people, is that there are so many ways to earn money online. Earning mm-hmm. money now is probably easier than it has ever been. Yeah, um, totally. And it's like, but still people are worried about finding a job, getting a job. And it's like, even for example, another one of my friends uh, currently works for like a budget airline here called Wizz Air. And um, like cabin crew used to get paid fairly decently, but not like not anymore. Yeah. So I think she earns something around about maybe 
1500 euros something like that per month yeah but of That's course nothing. you get the privilege of flying from place it's to place. nothing though that is nothing exactly yeah um and i'm like she was in the maldives actually just recently and she's like yeah i love it here it's amazing i was like so if you worked online you could live there for a few months if you <laughs> wanted you no know? it would be no problem and i've said this to her so many times but the problem is i end up coming off like quite pushy and as a salesperson, yeah. <laughs> but it's not, it's just because I'm so annoyed at these people who are working for these industries and not being rewarded for their actual time Dude. and skill and talent. You know? Yeah. I I'm the exact same way. I, um, Fiverr and YouTube have changed my life. Any opportunity I have, my friends, their wives, my fiance, my family, it's almost like I'm hammering them like almost in like a know-it-all kind of way where I'm like, just try it, you know, like, it might be amazing, but people get defensive because nobody likes to hear that they've been doing the wrong thing, you know, or they're, yeah. or they're not doing the right thing. But yeah, I think, yeah. uh, I think it's so amazing because like you say, you've had this like enlightenment where you started doing it. You're like, Holy crap, I can live in Poland. I can go to Australia. I can do whatever I want. I just yeah. quit my job. I'm trying to, you know, have more flexibility as well. You don't realize that that's possible until you've started doing it because you simply do, most people don't know how I wouldn't say easy, but how many options there are for making money online nowadays, which is what you were alluding to. It's crazy. Yeah. So, I Chris, think... before we, before we go, before we go yeah. to the next topic, I just <laughs> just we're at 16 minutes. I got to ask, how much are you making doing what you're doing on Fiverr? So on Fiverr alone. I would say I am passing between, on average, every single month, I would say seven to $8,000. But then there are also- American clients. dollars? That's American dollars, yeah. Wow. Um, wow, that's so amazing. It, it, honestly, it's from, even if I go back to, for example, the first month on Fiverr, I made just over $1,000 in the first month. Wow. Uh, so it is possible to make money pretty much immediately. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now kind of as I progress, obviously I've invested in like different equipment and things like that. Sure. Um, but yeah, generally now between seven to 8,000 on Fiverr and then I make up extra through clients who are outside of Fiverr. Oh, awesome. Um, so yeah, generally I, I can't complain at all, to be honest. 78,000, kind of you've made a thousand in your first month. I guarantee you that person you're talking about in the bank for 10 years is not making seven to 8,000 a oh, month. No chance. Nowhere close. No yeah. Chance. That's it's amazing, man. In Poland? No chance. Yeah. Oh, it's in Poland too. Yeah. No chance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. What, so what was your biggest month? Actually, do you know what? I think it was, I think it was February. Hold on. Let's, I've actually got it up here. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> so I think, all right. So, Okay, so February this year, and to be fully like transparent on this, the thing is with Fiverr, and you probably know this, you have orders which overlap the next month. Yeah. yeah so yeah. what I normally do is at the start or at the end of each month, I see how much is left in Fiverr and then compare it and write a note. Uh, but just looking at the actual Fiverr statistics. So February 2023... I made sales of eight thousand and thirty-two dollars, but February twenty twenty-two was my biggest month so far, and that was twelve thousand four hundred and sixty-eight dollars. Wow, that's um, like so in Canadian dollars, that's like fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. So that's like that's probably what you would make as like a mid to high level manager or director at a fortune 500 company. That is awesome. Yeah. But obviously, and this is the thing, it sounds awesome. And yeah, <laughs> I think this lot, is one thing. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of work, but also the more money you make, the more money you end up spending. I swear True. to God, True. like I don't see my bank account increase that much. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, like you say, you're sitting in front of a really, set up studio you've got all the gear now you know you're living in another country exactly. yeah that's cool exactly. man but honestly and th this is the thing and like um uh just going back to what you mentioned earlier as well about the 
about basically like you talking to your family and kind of being annoyed at your family. I think this is the issue. And this is exactly my situation. What I had a few years ago, when people go on the internet, there are, there are billions of websites, but when sure. people go onto the internet, they normally stick to, I would say maybe five different websites. Normally mm -hmm. it's a social media one, a news one, a shopping channel one, and they stick to the same five websites. Um, yeah. And that's the biggest problem. People just don't know about different stuff. They don't kind of expand their search in different regions or in different like in niches, let's say. Yeah. Like I didn't know Fiverr existed. I didn't know spokesperson existed. I know. Um, and it probably existed for a decade before you had even heard yeah. of it, you know? That, that's the thing. Honestly, the only thing I regret is not knowing about it sooner. I know. It's so true. And, and that's, I think that's a big part of like, at least what I'm doing. And I know you have your YouTube channel, you're doing the same. There is such a big opportunity to get people on board because when I started, people I talked to in my close circle didn't even know what the word freelancing meant. It was just, yeah, yeah. you know, now like it's synonymous with my life. Like I, it's like ridiculous. What, what is, of course I know what freelancing is, but people don't know because they go down the path of getting a job working at a bank for 10 years, it's never crossed their mind, right? And they've just never gone out of their little internet bubble to be like, wow, there's 25 massive freelancing websites or whatever number there is that I can make money on or it's crazy, yeah. yeah. And this is the thing, even with the freelancing, like there, there are some, it's like with the freelancing platforms, Fiverr and even the other freelancing platforms, I think there are good and bad points to it. For sure. example, if you want to like become a logo designer and you try to advertise yourself on Fiverr, you might make $5 here and there, but it's so yeah. saturated already because pretty much everybody can make a logo. Obviously, there's going to be some really professional logo designers, but most people are offering their services for $5 and that kind of thing. There's just no point in even... Yeah, it, It's just the time that you put into it is not going to be worth... You have, you have to do more than just the basics, yeah. Yeah. Similar to what you're doing with like the copywriting. Like, I feel like if you want to succeed as a logo designer, you need to be like a branding expert, not just a logo designer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. this is even on Fiverr. And this is what I'd recommend like any kind of seller on Fiverr to do. Uh, once you set up your gig and you probably already do this, but you can add extra options like uh, just extras basically. So for example, um, if a client wants two camera angles in the video, I charge an extra $75 for that. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas actually it makes my life easier because if it's a long script, I can then basically cut to the other camera and it doesn't look like a bad cut. Sure. Um, or for example, I recently started doing uh, t-shirts, t-shirts, hoodies. I don't personally, but basically if they want their logo on a t-shirt, a hoodie or a piece of clothing, I charge like $50 and I pay to get this made about $25. So I make profit on everything. And that's um, on Fiverr. That's on Fiverr. Yeah. So I just add okay. these options as extras, you know? Oh, that's uh, an extra. Like you'll wear their logo in the video. Yeah. 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 Oh, cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So that's a, that's a, such a smart idea. I feel like you're the first person I've spoken to who's, who's gone that. That's a really good idea. You can do so much like adding subtitles, extra $30, you know? Yeah. Um, there's so many different things. Even I charge $5 if they want their video compressed to a smaller size <laughs> and there's literally a free tool online which you can just upload your video into yeah. and it compresses it for free like <laughs> but it's like okay let's, but it's let's a service try. right like it helps them exactly. turn that around yeah. right like they someone has to do it that's awesome yeah, so man. It's just, i think it's just like thinking outside the box and offering more than what the other sellers are doing you know yeah that's awesome man so we've covered a lot, but, you know, thinking of where you're at now, where you've came from, what you want to do, like what doors has, you know, freelancing and Fiverr open for you? And like, what is your vision for like where Chris is going to be in five years? Like, is it still on Fiverr? Is it Fiverr plus other things? Like, what does that look like? So I, I definitely think Fiverr is still going to be there. Mm -hmm. Um, because, the opportunities are insane and the money that you can make from it are crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's still going to be there. I hope it's not going to be as much time spent on Fiverr. Uh, mm -hmm. Like even right now, I've downgraded the amount of time I spend on there quite a lot. So I outsource all of my editing now. Mm -hmm. um, 
just because it saves me so much time. Sure. I would also like to do that with the whole script writing as well. Um, but yeah, it's, so I would like to downgrade that. And I would hope right now the idea is the whole YouTube channel, building that up. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping by the end of May to possibly be monetized. Nice. Um, obviously, I don't expect to make a ton of money from that at the start. Um, but just, yeah, just kind of like having right now, I'm kind of scared that all of my eggs are in the fiber basket. You know, without sure. fiber, I would be very stuck, let's say, yeah. uh, in regards to the amount of income I'm making now. Uh, so I need to start expanding out and kind of thinking of new things. But I would say the biggest thing is just time. Like, seriously, having the time is insane. It's um, yeah. like right now I'm trying to do two videos a week on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, and that's going kind of OK. Not too bad. <laughs> it's, most of the time it's ended up like one, uh, one per week. But generally, I've also had another thought as well. And I'll put this out there now anyway. Um, purely because somebody turned around to me on YouTube the other day and they were like, oh, have you ever thought about like mentoring? And I was like, no, like for me, Fiverr has always been so simple. Like for me, I could tell you that within one to two weeks, you can start getting regular orders on Fiverr. Like you really can. Like if you do specific things, then you can start getting regular orders. It's not difficult, but too many people are putting their gig up there. It's on the last page and they're expecting something to happen. Nothing's yeah. going to happen, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so actually, I was thinking recently, no idea when I'll get around to doing this, but obviously courses are a massive thing at the moment. Mm-hmm. And I thought, okay, like if I structure this in a very good way, I could probably make a course on basically getting started on Fiverr sure. to the point of ranking well on Fiverr and getting your consistent orders. Um, that's that's a little thought in the back of my mind. Yeah, uh, and and that becomes like a piece of equity you have, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Whether or not it'll make money or not, it's it's also the yeah. fact that it's just teaching people how to do something. Yeah. Um, but again, time time is the issue. Uh, there's honestly yeah. just not enough hours in a day. It's crazy. I I feel the same way, man. Like I um, like last year and the year before. I had a couple months where I was like busy. I was getting like, for me, a lot of orders was like 30 to 35 a month. Yeah. You know what? This is great. But how do I go up from here? Right. If I'm spending X amount of time, I won't be able to build any other businesses. And that's been something that I've been concerned about. I want to grow income streams. So I'm not left with all my eggs in one basket. Right. So I've been weaning down my Fiverr business so that I'm at the point where I'm doing like, four hours a week. Um, I'm not making as much as I was before, but I, I kind of came to this point where I'm like, okay, Fiverr is great. But for me, I'm 100% trading hours in the day for money. And there's only so many hours in the day before I start to jeopardize my relationships, my health, uh, my sanity. Um, yeah. So it's it's interesting that you're looking at new things. Like I, I, I have the YouTube channel too, obviously, where this video is, is going live. Um, I'm working on kind of like a workbook for copywriters, like some little product that, you know, nothing crazy. Like it's not going to be like a thousand dollar mastermind thing, (laughs) you know, you know, it's going to be something that's easy enough for me to make and provide value, but something that I can keep kind of doing to keep growing. So like for me, YouTube is a great outlet. It's, it's kind of refreshing. Um, Fiverr is great. I think it'll always stick around. But yeah, finding that next thing is huge. Um, Just because like you say, there's so many things that you can do online. And just like how we talked about people getting stuck in their day job, we're kind of stuck in the YouTube and Fiverr vein. And, you know, when you focus so much on that, you, you, your eyes kind of close to what else is out there. So it's an interesting point to just keep looking at what the next thing might be. Cause I feel like that's how you get to that point of these super productive people you see on Twitter and YouTube who are like, 35 years old, they're, they're actually not allegedly making a lot of money, but they're actually making a lot of money because they've yeah. grown businesses in a smart way. Right. Yeah, exactly. And actually, uh, just to give, like, I, I told you about this the other day, and I think this is worth noting for pretty much everybody. Um, like in regards to probably 
the number one, I, I would honestly say the number one kind of side hustle or way to make money right now, um, and that's Amazon influencers. Um, yes, you did tell me about that. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. this is something I came across a couple of weeks ago, and I've been meaning to start this. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I think on my one of my previous videos on YouTube, I was like, at the end, I was like, okay, guys, yeah, we're going to set a little competition. Like, I'm going to start this, and in 30 days, I'm going to give you an update. Yeah. Well, that was probably about two weeks ago, and I still haven't started. <laughs> um, it's, it's just time, man. It's time. But seriously, yeah. some of the people who are doing this, like pretty much from their first month, they're making upwards of $500. And then some of the people who have been like, I've been researching this quite a lot. Some of the people are making even up to like $2,000 to $5,000 a month. And all they're doing is creating like product review videos of Amazon products, listing it on their kind of Amazon affiliate portfolio. Yeah. Um, and then it shows up under the actual Amazon product. So right. then when people click on it, if they watch at least 30 seconds and go ahead and buy that product within 24 hours, they earn a commission. Oh, so I didn't know it was like that. I thought it was like, um, so I'm in the Amazon Associates program where I can put like yeah. affiliate links in my videos and stuff. So you're saying the influencer program, you create a video and it shows up on Amazon? Yeah, so this is oh. next level. Uh, so this is why, obviously Amazon uh, affiliate and associate links is great, but you already need an audience. Sure, yeah, yeah, This yeah. way you don't technically need an audience because Amazon actually give you your own kind of portfolio on cool. the Amazon website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then on every product, and there's still tons of products on Amazon which don't have any videos because people are still, a lot of people still don't know about this. Um, basically, on every product, you get about six review videos, uh, five or six review videos. And mm. if your video gets in one of those, then there's a higher chance of Amazon traffic viewing it. Um, and then, yeah, they watch Very 30 cool. seconds of your video, go on yeah. to buy it, and you earn permissions. User generated content on Amazon. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So very cool. And I think honestly, right now, I think this is probably one of the best ways. And what I've noticed is this can work for everybody. So anywhere in the world you are, you can actually start your account. Cause I'm in Poland. I started it, but the videos will show up under the American Amazon. It's oh. only in the American Amazon at the moment. Which is the so biggest store, on, anyways. Yeah. Exactly. But getting yeah. on this now, most probably they will branch out over time so if you're on there like now once it starts branching out your videos could then be showing up you know in canada canada amazon the uk amazon etc yeah, yeah. so um, you have two weeks or six days to do this by the end of the month are you are yeah you pretty much? much yeah <laughs> <laughs> you got to get on it man i know honestly and i've told my partner as well i'm like look you should start doing this you know yeah um even I told my family, I was like, guys, <laughs> Amazon in the UK is so convenient. You've got tons of stuff from Amazon. Just start doing it. Yeah. Um, but now, for example, uh, my sister has come around to the idea that you can make a decent amount of money online. Mm -hmm. However, she's always been in like the whole arts and crafts sure. section. And the kind of issue, the only issue I have with her <laughs> is that she wants to provide a product. And okay. I'm like, for me, that's just too much hassle. You know, sure. if yeah. you can provide a more digital product, fantastic. But the time and effort you have to put into creating this product first and making it every single order. Yeah. Starving artist life. Yeah, exactly. That's tough. So, um, but at least she's making an effort. <laughs> yeah, no, it's first step. She doesn't know what she doesn't know. And that'll probably open a whole bunch of new doors for her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. All right, but, so Chris, two more questions for you, and then I'll, I'll give yeah. you your day back. Advice: one piece of advice for newbies, and one piece of advice uh, to answer the question everyone has: How do I grow fast? Okay, so um, one piece, and this is specifically for Fiverr, freelancing in general. Freelancing. Yeah. Um, okay, so one piece of advice for newbies is to. <laughs> watch youtube uh seriously yeah. um again i don't want to keep talking about my friends just in case they do end up watching this <laughs> <laughs> but basically there are so many my partner she she watches reality tv more than she watches youtube um and i'm like what are you learning from this nothing 
I have you know? the same conversation in my house, but that's a topic yeah. for another conversation. <laughs> exactly. And it, it winds me up so much um, because on YouTube, you can learn so much. There's so yeah. much good information. Um, it's free. And Exactly. Exactly. And a lot yeah. of time people are doing this. They're showing you real results and things like this. Uh, so, yeah, it's invaluable. But I just find a lot of people are just not watching the right stuff or exposing themselves to the right stuff. Sure. Um, they're kind of wasting their time. I, honestly, I would say stop scrolling through social media, like your typical Instagram, that kind of stuff. And just spend like your time rather than watching Netflix or TV, watch YouTube and just start clicking on a few things and YouTube will start serving you similar stuff. Yeah. And then, you know, it will just open the wormhole even further. Um, so yeah, I would say for newbies, just expose yourself to the opportunities because there's so many. Mm -hmm. For newbie or newbies or new freelancers, especially on Fiverr, don't just stick your gig on there. And this is the thing with Fiverr. It's like anybody can create a gig and that's great. You know, there's no pre-qualifications or anything like that. Anybody can create a gig. It's great and it's also bad because you get plenty of sellers on there with very, well, zero skill or zero talent, but they offer it at rock bottom prices. Most of the time yeah. they don't really get that many orders, but of course they will get some orders from clients who care more about price than they do quality. Terrible clients. Exactly. But then they complain about the quality after anyway. So it doesn't make sense. Um, but the fact is you have to look at your niche. You have to pick your niche depending on how saturated it is. So for example, like I think on Fiverr right now, website design, there's something like a hundred thousand services or something crazy. It's a lot. Uh, yeah. Whereas spokesperson right now, I think there's about three to 5,000 services. So if you can stay below that 10,000 services, I think you're going to do much better because you have much better chance of ranking. Yeah. Um, but to rank, you also have to look at your portfolio. Now, I've seen many because on my YouTube channel, people have sent me their uh, Fiverr account. And I'm like, okay, look, I'll take a look. And normally I've sent them like a little video on Instagram or whatever, explaining what I would change. A lot of it is just proofreading. Like there are just yeah. mistakes. You know, and it's yeah. like pay somebody five or ten dollars to proofread this for you. You know, yeah. Um, so Corner, people are cutting corners, plain yeah. and simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, ninety nine percent of people not finding success say it's Fiverr's fault or it's saturation. But exactly. I guarantee you, like you say, if you if everyone had a third party review what they're trying to do, maybe the thumbnail looks like garbage. Maybe the portfolio is not great. Yeah. Typos. You know, yeah. I, I, I had a guy, it's kind of funny. I was doing a live stream a few weeks ago and I review gigs live and the dude copy and pasted the description from another gig. And he was like, oh, I'm not getting orders. Why am I not getting orders? His profile picture was a different picture than his gig picture. It was like two different people. And then yeah. like, it was like, his name was Mark here and Steven there and Joe here. It's like, dude, like at least like, proofread the copy and paste man like come on yeah. Uh, yeah. that's that's a big thing as well like with the pictures um i find like a lot of people from like you know the middle east or eastern countries they're trying to portray themselves as a westerner and for example they put a fake profile picture uh, a more westernized name don't do it like that probably I, builds I, less trust than if you were just exactly. yourself yeah but i i have no problem working with people from you know i don't India, Indonesia, that kind of stuff. Yeah. If they're good, then they're good. And it doesn't matter where they're from. Yeah. But to do that, once a person, it's people can see through this so easily, especially from all the typos. Yeah. Um, you know, once you do that, it kind of, why am I going to work with somebody who can't even tell me their real name? You know? It's, yeah. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Issue. Fair. Good um, tips, man. But also, one more thing I would say, uh, and this is, how I would say that you can rank a lot faster on Fiverr because once you put up your gig, you will be on page 20 um, and nobody's scrolling back that far. No. So whether or not this is against Fiverr rules or not, I don't know exactly. But to be honest, I can't see why it would be. What I recommend is actually getting your friends and family to buy gigs. Now, you're not doing anything against the rules because technically they are buying gigs from you. Yeah. Fiverr is still making money. But 
every feedback you get, you will start to rank up. You, you're, you'll start to jump up the pages. And normally, for example, back in my day when I started, it would normally take about 10 to 15 feedback for me to get up to the first, within the first one to three pages. Oh, interesting. Um, so th I think this is a must. And obviously you need to deliver, you can deliver fake work, but you know, actually do the work. And the good thing is this work will show up on your profile as well and on right. your portfolio. So it's only making it better for you. Yeah. Um, I, I would say this, this is a must. I yeah. don't know how Fiverr looks at this. Technically, you're still paying. Technically, yeah. Fiverr is still making money. So I don't yeah, know. And, and like even better yet, if you can find a friend or family member who actually has a business that could use you, now you have a customer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, yeah. So yeah, pretty much just don't upload to Fiverr and expect miracles to happen because it won't. You, yeah. you have to put some effort into it. That's a good tip, man. Well, listen, I think we're going to wrap it up. This was great. Honestly, guys, Chris Farman, he's got a YouTube channel. He's a Fiverr seller. He's crushing it. Uh, I really enjoy talking to you, man. I think you have a lot of great insight to share. Um, and I think this is going to be really helpful. So for anyone watching this who's actually made it to the end of the video, I did an interview on Chris's channel about a, maybe a month ago or, or something like that. Yeah, you should go check it out. You should subscribe. I'm going to be chopping this video up into a bunch of shorts as well for those of you who are too lazy to watch the whole thing. Um, and yeah. Thanks so much, man. I'm sure we'll chat again soon. No worries. Mate, honestly, every time I'm chatting to you, it's so easy. And yeah, just I then start digressing and going off somewhere else. But yeah, hopefully it was useful to some people. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Take care, man. Awesome. Thanks a lot. See ya. Cool.